We must now move to questions uh, to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. I must inform the House that question number 15 has been withdrawn. I call Mrs Judith Cochran. Thank you. Question number one, please. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker, and thank the member for her question. My department supports creativity and innovation in line with the Executive's innovation strategy. This, included, this includes the delivery of the Creative Industries Innovation Fund from 2009 to 2015, and my department's ongoing support for our creative learning centres. A ministerial action group on the creative industries has been established to consider how best to build on this investment. My department's support has led to success stories such as Dog Ears, whose Puff and Rock series is now shown to a global audience through the Nickelodeon channel. Ms Cochran for a supplement. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her response. Can I ask the Minister um, what she is doing to promote um, examples of innovative partnerships between arts and business sectors working with young people, such as Culture Tech and Seagate, um, or TransLink and the Coots Theatre Company? I thank the member for a question. She has mentioned a few, and you know, through, through this um, ministerial advisory group, the action group, come together of groups, groups who are involved in creative industries, particularly around animation, around work for children and that. I have mentioned dog ears, but there's also the work of Kojar Dojo and others, even through, I mean, there's DECAL, there's DE, there's DETI and there's DEL involved in this. And I think it's a fairly high level group. And not only to build upon what we've done now, but even take in the work of performing arts and, and, and artists to help inform, particularly children and young people, around the STEM subjects. So, uh, I thank the member for a question, a supplementary question, because it actually leads on to what this work is trying to inform, particularly for the next CSR, which is really important. Well, Mr. Pat Ramsey. I thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Following on from Ms. Cochran's question, would the Minister acknowledge the major contribution that arts groups, community, and other ways make across Northern Ireland uh, in terms of uh, community support that they give? And as a minister of a frame of mind to review the existing funding arrangements for arts group to make them more sustainable and viable in going forward? Well, first of all, I would, would totally agree um, with Pat Ramsey in terms of the work that arts provide and arts and creative people, and certainly with, even within the business community, provide. Um, it actually will help towards your sustainability. At the minute, we're looking, there's, a, there's an advisory group looking at a new arts and cultural strategy which, unlike sports, for example, the arts didn't have an overarching arts and cultural strategy. Sports do, sports matters, which is supported by the entire executive. I think it's important to do this because we have a great cultural fabric within our community. Uh, we have a good partnership between arts and business uh, and arts and the cultural sector. I think we need, first of all, to look at what the needs are, try and agree as best possible way forward. Not only will that help address needs, but it will also help towards long term sustainability. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answers thus far. Uh, can I ask, the Minister uh, will be aware, no doubt, of the closure of Tower Street. Can she comment on any adverse impacts that might have on students travelling uh, to North Down? Thank the member for a supplementary question. I am, like I'm sure every other member, if not all members in this House, aware of the imminent closure or the closure of Tower Street. And I understand the performing arts courses at Tower Street campus uh, will cease. Uh, it will affect new students um, uh, who, who, upon taking those courses, will be accommodated at the South, South Eastern Regional College in Bangor. And to that end, I wrote to Minister Farry in May and again in June uh, because, you know, given the previous response even to Pat Ramsey and to Judith Cochran, it is really important that we have a joined up approach. Uh, but particularly there is there are, there are big concerns raised. I mean, I'm the lead minister for Creative Industries and I was informed uh, of this and certainly there has been and will continue to be a substantial lobby around ensuring that Tower Street is successful because it was and still remains successful, particularly the students travelling to the city of Belfast, who live in the city of Belfast, who have articulated this will cause some hardship. And I look forward to the Minister's replies to my correspondence to address exactly those questions and other questions. I call Ms Anna Lowe. Question number two, please, Principal Deputy Speaker. 
thank the member for her question. The impact of the Intercultural Arts Programme is currently being evaluated, and early indications are that the programme was extremely ex successful. I expect to receive the final evaluation report within the coming weeks, after which I'll be able to provide further comment on the social value of this programme, and certainly I would hope to have this completed uh, straight after the summer recess. Thank you, uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Uh, perhaps I should, uh, first of all, declare an interest that I'm the patron of Tara Nova, uh, an intercultural uh, arts organisation, which has received funding uh, in the last few years. Uh, I have the report, which, which is very, very good, and it's saying very much that three-year programme has been very, very valuable. Can I ask the Minister then, how will she promote in the long term opportunities for ethnic minority artists and audience as well as for intercultural dialogue and collaboration to be developed across the whole of the arts infrastructure in Northern Ireland? Um, I thank the member for a supplementary question and she certainly will have a preliminary report on the evaluation report. Um, even though the cultural, intercultural programme had a certain lifespan, I continue to provide funding after that, not only to allow the evaluation to take place, but also to ensure that the work, which some of which was contracted, was able to be honoured. Also, as well as that, in addition to that, the member will be aware that uh, funding, even through cultural partnerships, was awarded even to groups like Arts ACTA, as an example, and others um, to provide opportunities to certainly you know, give us the great spectacle of the intercultural arts, but also provide opportunities of building good and better relations, which at times come under extreme pressure, particularly within this city of Belfast. So in short, the, the interim report is pointing to a very successful programme. I'm taking that report and preparing to a final, final report with a view of trying to make an additional bid to monitor, potential monitoring rounds, but certainly try and build it into any future funding strands. Mr. Martin I'm going to ask Corley. I wonder, could I ask the Minister, in thanking her for her answers and thanking Ms. Lowe for bringing up this issue, how the funding for the Intercultural Arts Programme was distributed uh, over the last period? Well, the distribution um, of £300,000 was made available to the Intercultural Arts Programme over three years, and it was done in collaboration with many uh, groups and many successful outcomes have been done through uh, great collaborations. And the Arts Council made 34 awards to community organisations. Three organisations didn't take up their awards, and four organisations received two awards each. So 31 projects and 27 organisations were funded uh, through the Arts Council. And in respect to the Ethnic Minority or Minority Ethnic Individual Artists Awards scheme, Arts Council also made 20 individual artists awards to 18 artists. Uh, so it's this sort of collaboration with the Arts Council, which has not only helped sustainability, but through the Arts Council and through additional monies that were received through monitoring rounds, this intercultural arts programme has been very, very successful, and it's this collaboration distribution that's made it work. Ms. Karen McEvan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister uh, for a breakdown of where the distribution of this fund has um, uh, been given outside of Belfast and Derry, please, particularly at reference to the South Down area? Well, the member may appreciate I don't have those details to hand. Certainly, I'm aware of how many groups, but not where the groups were located. I mean, I know in the member's own constituency, through Sticky Fingers, for example, although it was, wasn't primarily an intercultural uh, programme, but certainly there has been, through my uh, work and through my department, interventions made in that area where there wasn't before, or where the award wasn't uh, at the par the organisation felt it needed to be. But certainly happy to provide the member with all those details. Well, Mr. Sean Rogers. Question number three. Thank the member for his question. In 2014, Sport NI's investment in outdoor recreation NI enabled the development and publication of a 10-year mountain bike strategy. This strategy is being further resourced in 2015 with the piece of live research on unmet demand for mountain biking and allied economic activity impact. Sport NI has invested over £70,000 in the provision of this mountain, of this mountain bike still skills loop um, and uh, providing an additional 1,600 metres of dedicated single track trail 
which is suitable for both recreational and competitive mountain bikers as a training facility. In addition, DECAL through Sport and I has invested £150,000 towards mountain bike skills and challenge trails. Over the past three years, my department through Sport and I has provided financial assistance also to Cycling Ireland and other bodies, uh, totaling over £500,000 towards cycling sports generally, also inclusive of mountain biking. Mr Rogers for supplementary. Can I thank the Minister for her answer? Minister, on the back of a very successful Grand Fondo that came into the moorings at the weekend, are there any plans for inter international um, mountain biking uh, events in the likes of Castle Island and in Kilbrony Park? Well, the member may be aware that certainly in terms of sporting events, even though they're sporting, but they're events that are within the gift of daddy, but is, is the, the facilities in Kilbrony Park fit for the host an international event? Absolutely. And I think the work through Sport NI in partnership with the governing body, indeed the partners involved in all this, as well as other colleagues, including Daddy and Dard, uh, will try and ensure that every opportunity is available to, to bring such spectacles, not only to the city of Belfast, but certainly to surrounding areas. Mr Gregory Camp. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, will the Minister liaise with her, uh, her colleague, the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development, so that a more strategic approach could be adopted in terms of not just mountain biking but other leisure pursuits, both in the forests and in the mountains, right across Northern Ireland, so that a strategic promotional aspect could be taken across the whole of Northern Ireland? Well, in short, uh, absolutely we will uh, liaise, and I will liaise with uh, Michelle O'Neill, uh, Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development, and, and have actually started that process already to ensure that our outdoor facilities are not just used for you know, traditionally mountain and walking and climbing, um, uh, but certainly young people, scouts, youth movements um, have all used the forests and the mountains as part of an outdoor leisure uh, package, and indeed, I have, Michelle O'Neill and I have started work, certainly on looking at tracking and mountain biking as part of this package. I'm also liaising with colleagues in DOE as an example to ensure that the, the, government, the local government through the super councils are involved in this as well, because it has shown in the past, I think this is where the members are trying to point, where there's joined up approach, particularly central and government level, not only do you have a better outcome, but it's more sustainability. Mr. Leslie Chris. Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, the call committee were in fact in Kilbrony last weekend and we were able to see at first hand you know, the excellent course it's there. But you really have touched on this, but it seems to me there's a great scope for other mountain back trails, if you like to call them that, or um, perhaps maybe a more amateurish one. Do you have any formal relationship with the Minister for Agriculture to try and use the forest parks for that purpose? Well, <clears throat> in answer to um Gregory Campbell, the, the answer is yes. We have started a formal process uh, to look at exploring opportunities through forests and hills and mountains to ensure, and it is also I'm trying to encourage local government as well and some of the governing bodies to try and get a better joined up approach for leisure and sporting and physical activity. I was tempted to ask, did you avail of some of the, the mountain biking facilities yourself? Um, but certainly I'm uh, making it. Uh, Hopefully, after the summer, making it my business to go down and see these facilities firsthand. I have seen others in the past, particularly looking at how young people can use mountain biking, orienteering, uh, and use the mountains and forests to actually do uh, activities such as team building. But I think these are our natural resources, and we need to protect them, not just so people can enjoy them for the view and the spectacle that they are, but that we can have a better outcome in terms of leisure, sport, and physical activity. Well, Mr. John Dallet. Question number four. Thank the member for his question. Uh, I have no plans to decentralise any jobs within DECAL prior to the restructuring of executive departments. Out of a workforce of almost 350, um, 50, sorry, 354 DECAL staff or just under um, are in posts located outside Belfast. These staff are based in satellite locations in five counties uh, across the north. And with regard to the members' own constituency in the northwest, I remain committed to take forward actions to build upon the success 
not only of the study of culture, but also to drive a proactive approach to tackling poverty and social exclusion uh, and inequality in that area, and an area which does continue to suffer from high levels of de deprivation. Uh, a North West office was established by my department in April of last year, and the team coordinates grant distribution uh, and actions across the North West, including Derry, Straban, Colrain, Limavady, and the surrounding rural areas. Mr. Principal, uh, Deputy Speaker, I was sure for a moment there the Minister was whistling my tune uh, when she made reference to the North West. And of course, I'm sure she would agree with me that the wealth of culture and music shared by the whole community in the North West is deserving of recognition. And would she agree with me before her department goes in different directions, she should really establish a prominent presence in the maiden city in Derry. Well, thank the member for his question, indeed a supplementary question. I think you just need to be careful about whistling and certainly whistling tunes in this place. But I accept what the member is saying, uh, and I do think there is a question further on down. I do anticipate questions about tunes, music, marching bands, and all the rest. I have already, albeit a very small presence in Orchard House, uh, and I hope that will grow, but not even that. That should be a base. To look at areas such as Limavady, Coleraine, Straban, uh, even as far as South Derry and further, all those surrounding areas, because I think it's important that when we, when we look at the success of city culture and indeed the legacy programme thereafter. It's very, very, it's very easy just to say that's me done and walk away uh, through my department and decal and indeed the, the team of staff that have been working there. That's, that's, that's not what they're pointing. The needs are there, the needs will continue to be there, as will decal. Mr. Catholos. Uh, can the Minister provide details of what engagement she has had with trade union representatives and staff representatives in relation to the restructuring of the departments? The member for a supplementary question. The civil service wide steps that have been taken place to ensure that regular engagement, certainly with central trade union side and staff side representatives, will continue. Certainly, and particularly on the, the departmental restructuring programme, it's essential that that's happening. Within, primarily within DECAL, my officials have met with staff across the department and have had very successful meetings with representatives of local trade union side and staff side representatives, and that will continue until the formal restructuring programme is completed and brought forward. Mr. Robin Swan. Principal Deputy Speaker. Minister, in restructuring of the executive departments, could you provide the House an update as to where she sees inland fisheries actually finishing up as a, as a joint unit? And also, if there was any restructuring or relocation, could Bush Mills be considered as a location for the new department head? Well, certainly, all those discussions have yet to be concluded, but certainly, I mean, the member will be aware of his own consistency through Bush Mills and even Ball Money. Uh, that DECAL have had a strong presence, particularly over decades, and I'm sure the member will join with me uh, in commenting and co congratulating the work that staff do, not just in terms of preserving fish stocks, but the work that they do, the outreach and engagement with local communities, particularly children. So it is important that those services not only are maintained, but they're added to in the new department that, that will find their home. Well, Mr. Jim Allister. Question five. Thank the member for his question. Safety is and must be at the heart of all stadia projects, including Casement Park. Given the range of experience and diverse perspectives on each capital project, we can be sure of one thing that not all times people will agree. However, we need to debate and dialogue to forge the best possible project and the best possible programme. The governance structures put in place for the stadia programme ensure the necessary checks and balances are in place and provide the forum for open debate and dialogue before final decisions are approved. As I have previously stated, I was aware that a project of this nature would have an important public safety aspect to be considered throughout the development of the process, and I am aware that the Safety Technical Group was involved in discussions about safety. However, the first I was made aware of the allegations that safety concerns had been ignored when the Chair of the Safety Technical Group gave evidence to the CAL Committee on the 30th of April. I was shocked by this and, as a result, commissioned an independent project assessment review, which took place between the 15th and 19th of June. A copy of the final power report will be published in due course, 
I want to make it clear that I'm happy for anyone to look at this programme openly and transparently. My department is fully cooperating with the Cal Committee's inquiry, which I hope will add some objective constructive analysis to this whole debate. Mr. Allister, first supplementary. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Paul Scott was very, very clear that he had warned the department, in his words, over many months and years about the safety risks. Now, either it seems the minister was turning a blind eye or the minister was asleep at the wheel. Which was it? Well, certainly Mr Scott's allegations are subject of two reviews, uh, certainly the committee's uh, investigation and indeed the independent investigation, in addition to the one that I've asked uh, DFP to come in and review. He made two very serious allegations. One, that he'd raised safety concerns and he was bullied and gagged into bringing those forward. But let me be totally clear again, because the member is very fond of making accusations about individuals and groups in this place hiding behind parliamentary privilege. Let me be totally clear. If you believe, or anyone believes, that either I deliberately hid uh, safety concerns, then they need to bring it forward. In absence of bringing it forward, I think the member needs to put up or shut up. I remind the minister to address remarks to the chair. Free. Okay, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I, I'm not here into the, the questioning around the investigation as a member of the committee. I'm doing that at committee. But in relation to the, the issue uh, that surrounds casement in terms of the emergency exiting, can I ask the minister if she has held recently held meetings with the residents who live immediately around the ground, or indeed with the Gaelic Athletic Association around these issues? Well, I'm due to meet a residence group. I know the members working with the Moore residence group. There are no, there's another residence group called ARC, who live around the media vicinity. I'm due to meet them uh, this week. Uh, in terms of the exit and emergency exit and the rest, I'm waiting on the uh, outcome of the power review. Uh, I think there has been an absolute wealth of paperwork uh, um, that has gone forward, not just to the committee. Uh, inquiry, but certainly will come forward as part of any new plan application. I am willing to meet anybody on this, have said so, and will continue to uh, do so. Uh, and I look forward to the meeting this week with uh, the Anderson's Town Regeneration Committee. Well, Mr. Ian Mill. Uh, was the Minister aware that the Chair of the Safety Technical Group thought that Casement Park had? as it has been described, show stop and safety concerns. Uh, and could you tell us what opportunities had he, Sports NI staff and board members had to bring any serious concerns to your attention? Well, first of all, and again to use this opportunity to repeat, I was not aware. The first I heard of these uh, allegations were on the 30th of April, when the member was brought forward uh, at the invitation of the chair of the Cal Committee. Uh, I was not aware of any show stop and safety concerns. There was ample opportunity to bring those forward to me, but I am reluctant to get into any more detail on that because that will be subject not just of the power review but the independent investigation that will look into the two serious allegations that were made by Mr. Scott on the 30th of April, April in front of the Cal Committee. Well, Mr. Roy Bay. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, given the degree of public funding that was involved in this project and the degree of public interest. Can the, the Minister uh, explain why these fundamental design safety issues, which can affect life and death issues, was not adequately addressed at the design stage and somehow proceeded to the planning permission stage? Well, first of all, the, the member is not across the detail of this uh, programme. Um, uh, the, he, he makes an assumption that the, the, the designs uh, were inadequate. If they were inadequate, Certainly, they have received planning permission. The end of the day, the arbitrary say is with the statutory authority of Belfast City Council, who issues safety certificates. Now, I am aware that throughout any construction, that is construction with an eye to ongoing discussions with the statutory bodies, namely the council, uh, to ensure that not only are the buildings compliant in terms of safety, but the design start to finish is also compliant with a view of the safety certificate at the end. Um, but again, I, I think you know, the member, like other members, is picking up on sound bites. 
he hears in the media and runs with it. You need to get better information. Mr. Patsy McGlow. I thanks very much, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answers up until this point. Could I ask the Minister, um, would she be confident that the inquiry being conducted by the CAL Committee will be done in an utterly fair, unbiased and impartial manner? Well, I thank the member for his question. Um, I, I, I know of some of the members on the CAL Committee who will ensure, will ensure that that happens. They will ensure that is impartial and they will ensure that it's done. I, I have seen and heard reports for example, by the CAL Committee Chair, which uh, were made, as I understand, as a member uh, of the DUP rather than as the Chair, uh, which have prompted some speculation about that independence. However, however, unlike other inquiries that have taken place in this House, I'm opening up my department, I'm opening up my books, I'm opening up the officials and staff and anyone else for uh, investigation uh, to ensure that not only safety was safety concerns were paramount, they will remain paramount. And if there are lessons that can be learnt from this, then I'll accept them in the spirit that they're, they're meant. Uh, but I know of other members in that committee who, uh, who I believe their personal integrity will ensure that it is fully independent. Mr. Nelson McCausland. Um, Mr. Principal, uh, Deputy Speaker, question number six. Thank the member for his question. The most urgent need at the moment is to get a commitment from Ed Vesey, Minister of State for Culture and the Digital Economy, to continue both funds beyond 2016 and up to 2021 at least. Following the formation of the new British government, I wrote to Mr Vesey to request a renewed and increased commitment to the broadcast funds, and I will be arguing for a relative funding levels and uplifts to the amount on the basis of need as these discussions develop. For supplementary. Um, I did actually ask the question there of how the Minister would assess relative need, um, and that is the core issue, I think, um, to the question. Um, could I remind the Minister that on a previous occasion reference was made to viewing figures as one of the factors uh, that would be taken into account in measuring relative need, but what are the factors? Well, certainly I'm happy to provide the member with details, but few figures is one uh, aspect, and uh, uh, certainly we need to be careful about those, because some of the criticisms that the member and other members, particularly in his party, have made, particularly about some of the content of some of the programmes, wouldn't be a good uh, parameter to use, particularly if you're using few figures. That would not reflect the needs in the community. It's one measurement, but there are others. Certainly the demand. Uh, would be another aspect of this uh, in terms of the uh, Ulster Scots broadcast funds, for an example. I mean, I know in the Irish language broadcast funds, the demand for the next or new funding, if it is realised, is already there. Apprenticeships and training, for example, are already there. Local commission and producers are already there in both funds. And certainly, um, I, as I said earlier, provide the member with uh, details about how we do assess need, but I cert would not and would urge a member not to use uh, few and figures uh, as the main uh, way in which to determine need because that will not ensure that the Ulster Scots Broadcast Funds gets the money that the member feels it needs. Well, Mr. Robin Swan. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. The Minister is uh, aware that I've asked her a number of questions in regard to Ulster Scots funding or for radio broadcasts, especially Fuse FM Bally Money. 107.5. Um, can I ask the Minister, um, is there any equivalent funding available that is for the, there's a, under Forest Nagaliga, there's the Community Irish Language Radio Scheme. Would there be any similar funding for an Ulster Scots based radio station? Well, certainly the um, money from Forest Nagaliga and indeed even through the broadcast funds primarily is looking at the development, the, the, the enhancement and the protection of the Irish language. So therefore, it looks at apprenticeships, it looks at training, it looks at sustainability. I think it's important that even through the Ulster Scots community and through 107.5 FM, I'm assuming, yes, that they, the people in your constituency, come forward with plans and even open up discussions with the Ulster Scots agency, who I believe have been instrumental and will be instrumental 
in trying to shape the way in which Ulster Scots funding is developed in the future, and that includes broadcast funds as well. Is up. We must now move on. That counts the time for listed questions. We now move on to topical questions. I call Brenda Hale. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And pursuant to my previous question on the lack of balance of literature sold at the Ulster Museum, can the Minister tell me what actions she has taken to address this? Well, I'm assuming that someone should have written to Mrs. Hale um, from my department based on the questions she asked previously. Uh, if not, I will try and chase that up. But certainly I know that uh, someone went out and looked at the bookshop, looked at the gift shop and actually looked at the, the facilities within the Ulster Museum to try and get to the bottom of the accusation that Mrs Hale made. Ms Hale for supplementary. I thank the Minister for her question, I mean for her answer and for the numerous book lists of stock that I have actually received. But sadly, after visiting the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum on June the 12th, I see no evidence of balance or that the stock shop relates to the book list that I've been given. Can the Minister agree with me that it is imperative that a cross-cultural balance is always prioritised, especially when one considers that actions speak louder than words? Well, certainly I do uh, agree with the member that it is important that people do see that there is balance, and not even that, that they see themselves reflected in the services that all government departments provide. So I'll certainly uh, pursue this with officials uh, and, and ag again try and get to the bottom of where the member feels that there is an imbalance and hopefully um, try and get that addressed, but I'd certainly investigate this as well. Oh, Mr Paul Frey. Thank you, Mr uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister to outline what her department is doing to support grassroots football at the both Amateur League, Saturday Morning League and Lower Leagues of the Irish League? Uh, uh, because we also know that these help a lot of young people getting into sport and a vehicle for them to keep fit. Well, I totally agree with the member, and I think um, I'm sure you'll join with me in con giving consideration uh, and certainly congratulations to the work that's every Saturday and every weekend, and even during the night, uh, parents, guardians, families, community groups, sporting clubs, and sporting bodies right across the work that they put into our families, our children, young people. So it is important that that not only is recognised, but that's invested in. I know that even in addition to what funding the IFA received, we put additional money in, 1.5 million, in order to reach out, particularly to hard-pressed communities, uh, to ensure that uh, social inclusion was enhanced, to try and attract more people to the sport. Uh, the same was done for rugby, the same was done for the, the GAA. I know that Sport and have done a great job in terms of their coaching. I think the question is we need to get that investment continued. And we need to work with local government to ensure there's a joined up approach. And we need to support the parents and the communities who do the car runs, who give up their time uh, at nights and at the weekends, particularly in miserable weather, to ensure that our kids enjoy themselves and they're, they're fit and they're well. Mr. Frew, for supplement. The, the, the Minister will be aware, as I am, uh, even in my own constituency of North Antrim, that there are various clubs and many clubs, uh, football clubs, that are submitting plans for first of all planning permission and then also for funding uh, to enhance their sports grounds and get them up to a certain level. Uh, there is a certain fear out there that not all of these clubs that are spending money at present they will be able to see out their development and, and actually seek and get uh, pl first planning permission and then funding to push forward their plans. Can the Minister give us an update on that and any fear that she would have around the various schemes funding? I, I have also met as a, an MLA, um, myself and my colleague Jerry Kelly, met with a lot of groups in North Belfast, but it's something I've heard across the board, both as an MLA and as a minister, and indeed of her representation from councillors right across the political spectrum. There is a big concern that expectations and hopes have been uh, developed, uh, particularly with grassroots clubs and some of the bigger clubs in the Irish Football League have been encouraged to spend money out of their pockets, which many of them don't have, in developing these plans in order to try and access the sport and lottery money. I am concerned about that. Uh, however, if that process has happened, then it will stand the groups in good stead in the future. But I am concerned about the level of expectation that's been raised. Well, Mr Trevor Clark. Uh, Deputy Speaker, can I ask the Minister 
I'm sure she's aware in terms of the Mac Theatre falling into disrepair, how she's going to find the money to actually assist them bring it into good repair again. Well, certainly, I mean, the member will be aware that there was almost £18 million spent on building the Mac, and as a result of some sto stones being loose on the facade, that was almost £8,000 that was spent just securing, bringing that into secure it. Uh, there's a million pound is needed to complete that work. Uh, I will be making a, a bid in the June monitor round for a million pounds for capital money and for £150,000 in terms of legal fees and professional fees uh, for revenue as part of June monitor round. Can I thank the Minister for that? And I think I'm also aware, Minister, that that was subject to a PAC report in terms of how they overrun in terms of the initial cost of doing that particular project. Given it's only three years old, is any of your department officials going to actually pursue some of those previously involved in that contract that something that's only actually opened within three years that it's falling into disrepair so soon, given that it spent so much more than it was originally estimated? Well, certainly, I, I agree with the, the sentiments of the member. I mean, there's been vast sums of public money spent. We would expect more than just from you know, three years of the building being developed that we wouldn't be running into these difficulties. And I think that's a, a concern and a point well made. I know my officials, in conjunction with the Arts Council, are working with the MAC uh, to ensure, first of all, to find out what happened, how it happened, and what lessons we can learn uh, for the future. Because I think people expect that, particularly when you spend that amount of public money, given in these times, they expect a better return for that. And if the perception is that that money has been spent and the building is crumbling, just to assure the member, some of the stonework has come loose. And as a precaution, we, the net was put around the whole building to ensure it doesn't happen. But I, I agree with the member. We need to get to the bottom of what happened. Mr. Kieran McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I understand that Northern Ireland continues to be the lowest per head of population regarding funding uh, for the arts anywhere in these islands. That being the case, is the minister not concerned, embarrassed, even ashamed, to be head of a department that continues in this uh, area? Well, first of all, um, the, I understand that there, there is a lobby out there saying that we are the lowest funded, uh, just to assure the member, and I will provide him with the figures, we are not the lowest funded. Um, I'm happy to share th that information with the member, because I do appreciate the group's lobby, MLAs, and rightfully so, you know, trying to get additional money in, but at times the full information isn't given. So out of regard for the member, I will furnish him with those figures. Uh, I'm very proud. Uh, to be in this department. I think I have the best job in the executive. I have said that and will continue to say it. Uh, I want to ensure that arts and creativity and culture have additional money, but I also want to ensure that people have their facts and the right information. Well, Mr McCarthy for his supplementary. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, I'm grateful to the Minister for her response. And indeed, I'm delighted to hear that she is uh, rejecting the accusation that her uh, department is the lowest funded in these islands. Certainly whenever I served on the, on the Culture Arts Committee some time ago, that was the case, and it was quite an embarrassment to us all. But does the Minister accept that investment in the arts, and particularly new talent, can be a driver for change, and that her party's irresponsibility over the budget is simply undermining all of that good work throughout Northern Ireland? Well, first of all, um, the the, the situation we're in, I firmly place the blame at the feet of the British Tory party, and, and that's, that's, that's it. I'm not getting into the argument about raising revenue. I've been through this with a member before, and I think it's an old, a tired old argument. However, I do think there is additional money needed for arts and culture, and to that end, that's why we ask people in the sectors to come together to try and provide a robust, overarching strategy, in the same way as a member will be aware we have the Sports Matters strategy which all executive departments have signed up to and committed to in terms of money. I think that's the, the future for arts and culture. Uh, but in terms of where we're at, in terms of our budget where we're at, I, I think it's unhelpful that parties here are uh, divided in this. I think much better we reunited and go to 10 Downing Street to argue for this place rather than pointing fingers across the chamber. It's unhelpful. Call Mr. Chris. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister uh, what performing arts and theatre productions she has attended and supported uh, this year, and how her department has invested in the performing arts? Well, certainly, um, 
there's a perception out there that I don't go to plays or films or groups, and that's not the case. I have been to quite a lot. I mean, as recently as last Thursday, I was in QFT, and before that, I went to a children's choir, cross community choir, and then was at a, a, an event which, which looked at the power of performing arts to help people recover from conflict. Um, so, yeah, I'm certainly happy to provide the member with details of that, but certainly do recognise the fact that performing arts and the arts sector, just in response to his colleague here, McCarthy, does need to, to have some leadership and some value placed at this executive. And my concern and fear is that unless people see the power of arts and the regeneration opportunities that it will have, it will remain one of those departments that people will feel it's a luxury rather than a right. Mr. Little for a supplementary. Thank the Minister for her response and absolutely agree that performing arts is to be supported, not least given the growth, uh, economic growth potential from it as a sector. But can I ask the Minister what more leadership she and her department can show to support and invest in performing arts in Northern Ireland? And again, not, not to sound repetitive, but I, I do think uh, it is about ensuring that there is an overarching strategy there because an absence of a fully executive funded strategy for arts and culture that and then I believe the groups, particularly those within the performing arts sector, but not exclusively performing arts, will remain that the funding will be subject to um, cuts, that the cuts that particularly that the, the British Tory government are trying to inflict in this community, including our artists, are eye watering. And it's better not only do we, we resist those, but we join up and sat out our stall for arts and creativity for at least 10 years on. Call Mr George Robinson. Thank you, Mr Pr Principal Deputy Speaker. Would the Minister's take away Limmer Valley Library has had its opening hours reduced, despite Limmer Valley having some of the worst areas of deprivation, practically in the whole of Northern Ireland? Well, certainly um, the, the reduction in open hours are now for consultation, and some of the reductions uh, in opening hours were done on the basis of users, people who use the library and the facilities, and not exclusively for libraries' purposes, but even use it in terms of a community space and facility. Libraries and I, and I uh, regret that, but it was important that in the, 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 the January 15-16 the budget we protected libraries at 7.5 when the rest were given 11.2, but it is down to how often you use your, your library to ensure not only its sustainability, but to ensure that the opening hours not just remain the same, but where possible increase. Mr. Robinson, for a supplementary. Thank you. <clears throat> Does the library reduce uh, closure hours decision not go against the stated criteria of the consultation her department carried out? Well, uh, it was libraries and I carried out the consultation, and the reason the consultation was carried out to ascertain exactly what libraries' hours were used for and how often they were used. The purpose is that the consultation was done and libraries and furnished to them got the feedback and got the analysis from that consultation and then made the reductions, which in some cases were minimal, uh, based on the usage. And I think that's the first and most transparent way of doing it, regrettable as it is. Mr Paul Given is not in his place. I call Mr Stephen Moutry. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister to outline her department's financial commitment to Orange Fest? not only in Belfast, but across Northern Ireland and to the 12th of July celebrations for the current year? Well, certainly through um, the Community Festivals Fund, the member will know that that is administered by the local councils. So our, our funding is administered by the local councils, not just for Orange Fest, but other festivals throughout the year. Mr. Moutry, for a supplementary. Uh, thank you. Can I ask the minister then to outline how much funding actually is allocated to Orange Fest across Northern Ireland. And given that hundreds of thousands attend Orange events annually, what more can the Minister do to allocate proportionate and appropriate levels of funding? Well, I, uh, I give the councils the, the, the levels of funding, and it's down to the councils and the councillors to ensure that there's appropriate levels of funding across the board. I mean, the member is a seasoned councillor. He should be more than aware of the funding that was into his own council. Uh, but other than that, there, there is certainly no indication that additional funds are coming. Uh, and even if there were, it wouldn't necessarily dictate that they're spent on Orange Fest. Time is up. Uh, members will take their ease while we change the table. Point of order, Mr. McCausland. Um, 
Um, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, in response to question number five uh, in the uh, ordinary oral questions, uh, the Minister made uh, what could be perceived to be some uh, criticisms or attacks on the integrity of myself as Chair of the uh, Culture, Arts and Leisure Committee. I would ask the uh, Principal Deputy Speaker if you would look at the comments that were made um, as to whether they were indeed appropriate. Uh, and can I assure him and the House that indeed the committee will retain its role of scrutinising thoroughly the work of the Department and the Minister. But I would ask him to look at the comments that the Minister made. The member has put it on the record. Uh, we will look at Hansard and we will come back to the member on the matter.